Welcome to this week's snippet. This is where we get down and dirty on a specific topic. In today's topic, what is epigenetics? I'm Dr. Ben Lynch, and this is the Dirty Genes Podcast. So you can always look up words, right? In the dictionary, you can browse the internet, you can ask someone. But here at the Dirty Genes Podcast, I want to share with you some actionable ways you can define things and apply them to your everyday life. That's the goal, right? If you want to define something, make it apply, applicable to your real life situation, because that is how you learn and that's how you can get better and better and optimal. So According to the standard definition out there of epigenetics, epigenetics is the study of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way your genes work. Now for standard definition, that is pretty darn good, but let me take it a step further, but through a story. The first time I ever heard about epigenetics was from the great work of Dr. Bruce Lipton. I was sitting in class at Bass University first year of med school, first quarter, using this old, big old TV with the VCR and the tape of Blue Slipton went in there and he was discussing how the environment that you perceive through your own eyes, sense of touch, ears, sense of smell, taste, influence how your genes turn on and off. And I was thinking, what a nut job. What a freak, there's no way. I mean, when I was 17 or 18 years old, I remember I was walking down the hallway of my home and my mom was having a conversation with some other lady and they stopped me in the hallway. They were talking about schizophrenia and my stepmom looked at me. She goes, oh, you're 17. Said, yes, right. And she goes, well, you need to be careful because schizophrenia hits right around puberty and you have schizophrenia in your family. That stuck with me. When you hear statements like that, they are just blinding in terms of their power, and you just, you can't forget it. I cannot forget it. I remember my back was against the wall. I remember exactly where I was standing. I remember where she was standing, and her friend was standing, and her friend was slightly taller than she was, and I remember it was afternoon, and there was maybe a dog or two in the hallway because we had 12 dogs, but that statement hurt. And here I was at 17 thinking at any moment, any morning I was going to wake up and my personality was going to be different. I was going to be labeled as a schizophrenic. And that scared the crap out of me. And so when I realized that Dr. Bruce Lipton was saying something that was completely, utterly the opposite, whereas, yeah, I might have schizophrenia in your family, you may have schizophrenia in your family or some other type of problem, but you may not go on in your life to get that. And why is that? Because of epigenetics, genetic twins. So genetically identical twins can go on through their life. They'll look the same in the beginning. They might look the same pretty much for, you know, a number of decades. And then they move to different areas, different environments. They surround themselves with different people, different influences, different choices, take different foods in their mouth and different supplements or no supplements and different meds, different things being ingested, different influence on their genes. And all this, while they might be genetically identical, they are epigenetically 100% polar opposite. One might be, you know, a track athlete. The other one might be a couch potato. They might be both track athletes, but maybe one is performing way better or maybe one's doing hurdles and one's doing something else. And maybe they, you know, are 10% body fat versus 25. And it doesn't really matter. But what matters is that your choices are what are influencing your genes. And the biggest thing that really resonated with me is what I described in the introduction of the book, Dirty Genes. I tell the, the story of what really got me and really made me excited. And I want to share that with you right now. And that's when I watched something on the internet called The Tale of Two Mice. And this was a Nova special. And in this Nova special, they discussed how they took these genetically identical mice and they are programmed. So they're genetically designed to have heart disease, 
diabetes and cancer. So then the researchers can do certain things to these mice throughout their life, maybe with medications or foods or chemicals, and to see if they can prevent those things or you know, prolonged treatment or what have you. Maybe they get the, the cancer and then they can test different drugs on them, right? So basically they're bred for research. And this researcher had this brilliant idea and she went to the, to the main head researcher and she said, you know, I, I really want to do something different here. Look, we got these agouti mice. They are genetically destined to have diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, like the three top killers in, in the world today. And all I want to do is change their rat chow. I want to change what they're, what they're eating. And, and, the, and the guy was like, okay, sure. And so what they did is they had the mice eat this typical rat chow and they were born and they got the typical problems. And then um, she took, uh, this is not the exactly how the study went, but it's good summary. And then she fed the pregnant uh, mice with some chow that had some folate and B12 and some other methyl donors in there. And those baby mice went on to not get those diseases. But wait a minute, they were born, they were, they were born with genes that were causing them to have increased susceptibility to cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. But that's it, increased susceptibility. Those interventions, that early intervention from pregnancy made their genes cleaner. And that, that was amazing. So epigenetics is putting you in the driver's seat of how your genes are functioning. So think of it this way. In your kitchen, we, as we discussed on a podcast here on Dirty Genes Podcast uh, entitled, What Are Genes? And in that, I basically say that genes are your blueprint and genes are like recipes in your kitchen. You can have a thousand different recipes in your kitchen, but these recipes are not like producing a bunch of food randomly. You have to actually pull the recipe out. You look at it. You have to have the ingredients on hand. And then you have to have the tools on hand, the oven, the fridge, the mixers, the, you know, the pans, with mixing bowls. You have to have all that around, just like your genes have to have tools and your enzymes have to have tools. Now, you are the one in charge of that recipe. You are acquiring the ingredients. You are acquiring the things which your genes need in order to function. Your genes produce enzymes, and those enzymes need to do work, and those enzymes need various things in order to do work, like vitamins and minerals, and protein, and carbohydrates, and fats, and glutathione, and so on. So you are the chef in your own kitchen. You are the director of your own genes. I want you realizing this. I want you believing that your choices ultimately define how good or bad you feel. So next time you have a decision to make, which is probably right now, right? Am I going to continue to listen to this guy? Or am I going to turn it off? Or am I going to go do something else, right? You have the power to make choices. So choices do two things. They clean your genes or they dirty them. If someone comes up to you and says, you suck, that dirties your genes, you have two choices. You can ignore them and saying, yeah, that's fine. You can think I suck, no problem. Or you can turn to them and you can say, you know, I don't really appreciate that talk and I, I don't really want to be around that. I'm really working on, you know, supporting my own health and that is pretty toxic language. So I would appreciate it if you would stop using those condescending terms towards to me and having a different type of discussion. And if that doesn't work, for you, then I think we should just separate our own ways because, you know, that's just toxic. And by you spelling out those toxic words, it's actually bad for your own health too. So surround yourself with people who build you up, who clean up your genes. And constructive criticism is great, but it's got to be constructive, not destructive. So be the chef in the kitchen. Have the quality ingredients. Surround yourself with good quality ingredients as well. Good quality people, clean environment. These are empowering yourself to make good choices so your genes can function. And let me give you a very specific example because this very specific example will give you some trust 
that you actually do have control of your genes. I'm going to give you two, actually. First one, if you're driving, don't close your eyes. But if you're driving, I just want you to add to your vision state, you know, your vision in front of you, or just mentally picture lemon. Sour lemon. Ooh, that's sour, right? What's happening to your mouth right now? Think lemon. Biting into a nice juicy lemon. Sliced in half, you just take that lemon wedge, you bite into it, right? Oh, my mouth is salivating like crazy. Uh, so just that thought directed your mouth to salivate. And that is the power of epigenetics. So you have the power to make saliva like that. So now let's take it a step further on something that uh, is a bit more, well, it's just different and maybe not as fast acting, but it's still powerful. So in the evening, you want to fall asleep. You want to go to bed. And you all know about melatonin. And you know that melatonin can help you fall asleep at night. But did you know that your own body makes melatonin? Yes, Ben, that's, yeah, obviously. Okay, well, did you know that there's a gene that does that? Oh, well, I didn't think about it that deeply. That's interesting. So yes, there is a gene called ASMT. And this particular gene uses a nutrient in order to function. And it also is inhibited by light. Yes, light. So if you are staring at your screen, if you're watching a movie on your laptop or your TV in your bedroom, which is a bad place to have a TV. We do not have TVs in any of our bedrooms, but we basically have TVs in our bedrooms because of our phones. But regardless, really try hard to, well, try hard is, is basically, you know, do just do what Nike says, right? Just do it. Brilliant slogan. slogan. Just don't watch a screen in the evening before bed because you need to support your ASMT gene. Remember, you have a couple choices. You're dirtying your genes or you're cleaning them up. So your ASMT gene, in order to produce melatonin, needs darkness. So turn off the lights or dim them earlier. And or I got these sexy looking glasses here that I'm holding in my hand. And these are blue blocks. And I got prescription ones because my eyes are not very good. Um, I was born that way. And uh, thankfully, my kids have, were born with good eyesight 2020. But it doesn't matter if they are born with 2020 vision because blue light is destructive for your eyes and it's destructive of your melatonin. So put on blue blocking glasses of any type and there's some fraud ones out there. Ask for laboratory um, you know, proof that it blocks blue light. So I know that blue blocks blocks 100% of blue light and I actually stared at this blue light emitting LED thing that my youngest uh, Theo has in his room and I didn't even see the light. It was gone. It was weird. I took my glasses off. I saw the blue light. Put my blue light on and I didn't see it. So wear blue blocking glasses. Better yet, don't even look at a screen. Your ASMT job will start realizing that there's darkness. Your body will start producing the melatonin. And then you'll start getting sleepy and you will fall asleep at night. Now, the blue light blocking glasses can be so powerful so my wife has the, the red colored lenses, the amber ones, and she will put those on. We might watch a movie an hour or two before bed or even an hour before bed or a show or what have you. And uh, she'll put on the amber lenses of blue blocks and she'll be sacked out next to me on the couch, literally just putting them on 20 minutes. So the red ones are really, really blocking in the blue light and enhancing of your melatonin. So that's uh, powerful stuff. So tonight, when you go to bed, just tell yourself, okay, I'm going to clean my genes. I'm, I'm going to empower myself over, not over your genes. You're going to team up with your genes and you're going to give them what they want, not distract them with things like light. So you're going to support your ASMT gene by no screen time, using blue, black, and glasses, dimming lights, and trying to get a little bit of carbohydrate in before bed to support the melatonin synthesis because melatonin comes from serotonin. And if you want to get more information on how to support 
your sleep, then you can pick up the book Dirty Genes and learn more about a particular gene, COMT and MAUE, which are also uh, associated with sleep as well. So you are really in control of your genes. Remember, you can, you can share this example with your friends with the lemon trick, and you can do the ASMT gene enhancement as well with the blue light blocking glasses or just not looking at screens of any type before bed and dimming your lights. So until next time, put this into practice. Every single Dirty Jeans podcast that comes out, when we have these little snippets, I want you putting them in into practice. Don't just listen. Apply what you learn. You got to apply it. So put this one in perspective today. Try to go with some friends and talk about sour lemons and teach them about epigenetics because when you teach others, that's when you learn the best yourself. Take care. 